Hi everybody, uh, Ian Spanier here for Westcott. We're here today out on this beautiful location doing a models portfolio. I'm gonna show you guys how we're going to take advantage of this great location in a few tricky environments. One of the things that we wanna do for this, uh, we're gonna call this a commercial portfolio for our model Sabrina today. And in order to have consistent light, we're going to light it with the FJ400 series strobes. And we're gonna probably use a couple combinations of uh, different umbrellas today. Based on the challenges that we're gonna be facing, we've got some winds, so we're gonna be looking for some different coverage to try to help us a little bit. But the main reason that I'm gonna to light today and not just use natural light is that I want a consistent look to this portfolio. I want a commercial feel to it to really give a sense of the kind of work that Sabrina is gonna be aiming for in her portfolio more of the fashion model type stuff, the magazine work, the advertising work. So in order to have a little bit of a slicker look, something a little bit above the level of just natural light, I'm gonna light everything and give a little bit of, of our own control and pop to all of these pictures. Out in the fields, we wanna minimize our equipment. So I've got two FJ400s with reflectors here in this bag. Westcott makes this nice uh, carry case in one of their kits. I've got some diffusion for the umbrellas as well as extra batteries, uh, iPad. I fit a lot of extra things in here because there's so much room and it's really not a heavy bag. So that's kind of nice. I've got a 43 inch deep silver umbrella, one of my favorite uh, items to use from Westcott, as, long, as well as a seven foot silver umbrella as well. We're gonna have to be careful with that one based on the wind, but we'll see what we can work out. So I'm gonna build a one light kit right now, and we're gonna start our first shot off uh, up here in the weed. This is something I always talk to my models about, uh, particularly when I work with models or celebrities. I find that they're great at what they do and the good ones are really great at what they do. Uh, often what I'll say, and this is kind of just something more that works for me, uh, is if I get quiet, it just means you're doing great. Um, and don't get nervous if I get quiet. I tend to shoot pretty quiet. So if you feel like as you're going, I'll give you a little clues here and there, but if I go silent, it just means you're doing great and I don't really need to say anything. I just want you to keep doing your thing. This is your portfolio, so I really want you to kind of do your own thing. And so here's a case where I will sort of give that out to the subject so that they sort of think about that and it kind of pulls them away a little bit from the idea of me just back here with the camera and all that stuff. And these are things I'm always trying to do with my subjects so that they relax. And these are just little psychological things that I do along the way to try to get them to a place where they feel like they can just be themselves. Okay, so we got our first shot done. We picked a little bit of shade to put Sabrina in and then we relit her through the shade, sort of matching the feel of the natural light but with a little bit of extra kick. With all of these umbrellas, you've got two options. You've got the white interior and the silver interior. Silver seems to fit me better. It's a little bit more my style. I sort of like that one-two punch of the diffusion mixed with the specular quality of light to get a little bit of kick, but still very soft. Sometimes there's a better need for just complete soft, so I would go with the white interior with the white diffusion and then just get a very much softer look, I would call it. So those great, options are really both available to you and it's really just to your own preference. It's just like being a chef, you kind of sprinkle a little bit extra salt this way or that way, it's to your own taste. So now that we've got that shot done, we've moved up the trail a little bit and we found another location that we're going to work with and this time I'm going to show you how I would use the sun as a second light. So if I was only going into the field with let's say one strobe, quite often I'm going to look at what the sun is doing and can I use it as a second light, be it a hair light, a highlight, or a main light, and using my strobe as a fill. Those are all the options that are available to me. So in this case, I'm gonna use the sun as a backlight, which will give a nice sort of glow to the background of our model. And as well, the key light will be that seven foot umbrella, also with the silver interior for my taste, 
and that's going to give us a nice little punch in front with some nice light from the back. One other thing I always like to point out, and again, this is personal taste, everybody has a different opinion on this stuff. Whenever I'm using backlight, whether it be the sun or an artificial strobe, I'm going to look for certain things that I don't like in the picture and make sure that I cue my model away from those things. So if Sabrina turns her face towards the sun, once we get this highlight on this side, if I'm lighting my key light from the front, that's something I want to avoid. I don't like that highlight up on the nose. So in this case, I would direct my model to bring her chin over this way and keep her face out of the sun so that the only light on her face will be my controlled light, which in this case is the seven foot umbrella. Whenever I know that I'm going out on trail or going to a hiking spot or somewhere where I'm just gonna be traveling with just one backpack, I always wanna make sure that I have a kit of stuff that is just what I need, really not much more. So I thought I'd bring you inside my bag and you get a sense of what I bring with me on a shoot like today where we're sort of hiking around a lot of different spots. Number one, always have a meter with me. I talk about this every time, how important it is to have a meter, especially when you're using strobes. Inside my bag, obviously I've got my camera. I have a spare lens. I've got a couple extra batteries. I've got my memory cards. I've got plenty of those. I always make sure I have extra of those. Aside from a lens cloth, I always make sure that I have an air blower with me. That little bit of dust that gets on your lens, the worst thing you can do is try to remove it with your shirt or a lens cloth because you will scratch your lens or your filter that's on your lens. So a little air blower is great. You can go on the plane with these very easily. You don't have to worry about it being compressed air and getting taken by TSA. So this is always in my bag, whether it's my backpack or my rolling case, it's always there. Since we're moving around quite a bit, I went with a really small bag. This is my Think Tank Backlight 18 L, which is the smallest of their series with this one, which is great for me because it supports a lot of weight, uh, but you don't really feel it when it's on your back. So it might be heavy when you pick it up with your hand, but once it's on your back, it feels great. The um, spider holster uh, battery and um, extra memory card case is what I keep on the outside along with my water bottle and I'm good to go. So we're gonna do a little added shot here. I noticed when we first got out of the car in the parking lot, there was this great rock here. I was hoping once we headed into the trail that we would find some rocks to go up near, but everything was off trail. So there was just no option and the rules are that what they are in the park, so we couldn't go off trail. So I figured we'll take advantage of this rock that's right here. And I'd show you something that I would normally do in the studio, but works really well on location too. I'm stacking a seven foot silver umbrella with white diffusion along with a 43 inch deep silver umbrella with white diffusion we have a little less wind here but you can see that we're getting a little bit of wind so we're going to you know just try to shoot quickly here uh, the fj 400s are going to be set at two different uh, ratios i like a two stop difference between my key light which is going to be the seven foot and the fill which is going to be the 43 inch deep silver Sabrina is kind of tucked into these rocks, so that's kind of protecting all of us from the wind a little bit, not so much the big sails that we got over here. And I'm just going to do a quick meter reading, make sure we're set, and then we'll get to shooting. Whenever I'm metering more than one light, I'm always going to be metering them individually. This is super important in order to really understand what each light is doing. So my key light, which once again is the seven foot umbrella, I'm going to read that alone. Then I'm gonna turn it off, which I can do on the trigger here very simply by putting it in sleep mode. Then I'm gonna read the 43 inch umbrella individually, then put them both on and read again, just to make sure that I have the exact setting that I want for this shot. So in a setup like this, we have a lot of options. One of the things that's happening here is that because I'm creating light in shade, I have complete control over how I want this to look. I thought it would be a cooler image to sort of make this feel almost lit where it feels like almost dark 
where she's set and we're adding light to the situation. I could do a higher ISO and balance everything and make it, you know, sort of just a little touch of light. But these are the great things about having artificial lights on location is that you have a lot of different options as far as the, how you control the light. Basically what you just saw was my studio look that I use all the time on location. We did keep things very portable today and as you can see it didn't stop us from creating looks that I would normally create in a studio out on location. So if you have a big crew with you and you've got a bunch of people that can carry a lot of heavy stuff, you can use things like Rocky Mountain stands when you're out on location which give you an option to work from a stand on an uneven surface. But since we were a very small crew today and we're working very portably, using a light pole where you really can just have some base for your light, but not necessarily have to put stand legs down, that gave us a lot of options, more availability to where we wanted to shoot, when we wanted to shoot. And those things are very important to me when I'm trying to move around, get a lot of shots done in a very short amount of time. One of the key elements to everything I do is portability. The FJ400 series is great for that. When I'm working in a gym, it allows me to move around equipment without having to worry about big heavy cords and having to unplug and replug and find outlets and all of those variables that take a lot of time away from what you want to be doing, which is shooting. So the FJ400 series is great whether you're on location, in studio, inside, outside, wherever you go, it really can go with you and, and get a lot done. One of the things you might have noticed today is that we faced a lot of challenges. We had wind, we had changing light conditions, we didn't know exactly what we were facing the whole time. And because of that, you need to be versatile as a photographer. Some of the things are not always gonna work out the way you want them to. You're gonna get caught in traffic, your subject's gonna be late, your subject's gonna walk up and tell you you got two minutes. These are all variables that are gonna take place on set. So there's an amount of patience that's always required and as well, versatility. I think that is one of the key things that allows a photographer to be successful. One of the ways that I think equipment comes into that is being versatile with your equipment. You might have seen that there's lots of ways that we utilize the umbrellas. There's lots of ways that we use, utilize the different modifiers that Westcott makes. And whatever I'm working with products, I'm looking for products that help me be versatile, allow me to create different looks, even in one environment, so that I can provide to my clients the best amount of pictures, the best variety of pictures, and the best options for them to go in different directions if they need to. Let us know which of the photos today were your favorite. Send us some comments down below and stay tuned for more material from Westcott University.